Hello everyone, Gliderman here. So in today's episode of Math, uh, we're going to be working on what is a second derivative. So, let's get right into it. So you may remember from an earlier episode where we noted that a derivative, if we notate it like this, so if we've got f of x equals x to the power of n, we know that the first derivative, or just the derivative of it, is equal to n times x to the power of n minus 1. And so that was the basic concept of the first derivative. Now we're going to be working on the second derivative. It is almost the same thing, but it's kind of useful for other things. So we had an example where this was the position function, or an example of this would be, a, or a, a variant of this would be the position function, and then the change in position is simply the velocity. Now, we can use the second derivative to find the change in velocity, or also known as acceleration. So that would be the second derivative of said position function. So, it can be a little bit harder to notate uh, in this form, but we'll give it a shot. So if we've got f, and then we've got two tick marks um, to denote that it's a second derivative of still x, we know that that is equal to, well, we got to bring this down again. So that's n minus 1 times n times x to the power of, well, n minus 1 minus 1 is just x to the power of n minus 2. And so that would be the second derivative, just like that. So let's see how we can apply that to something with the position function. So let's just say that we've got a position, and we'll notate that as p, and then in relation to time, for the t there, and then we've got that just equal to, let's just say, uh, 5x, and then we'll do squared uh, plus 7x plus 3. And that would be the position function. So uh, the graph of that would look something uh, roughly like that. It would be an upwards facing parabola. Obviously it would be shifted around on the coordinate plane, but I'm not too worried about the specifics of that. We know that it's a parabola. So then we can simply find using the first derivative, the velocity as time changes, or for a specific time. So we just simply pull down this 2. So 2 times 5, that's 10. Now, we've gotten good enough at it that we can start skipping a couple intermediate steps that we are reasonably sure about, because we can already see the two variables that we're using, and we can say, okay, well, 2 times 5, we know that that's 10. And then we can do x, and then 2 minus 1, well, that's just 1, and we don't need to write down the 1 for uh, it just to be the x there. We can do the x. Well, we know that's to the power of 1, so that's just plus 7, because that's 1 times 7 is 7. And then x to the power of 0. Oh, wait, that's just 1. So uh, we've got 10x plus 7, and then x to the power of 0. Bringing down that 0 in front, well, that's 0. So that's the velocity with the uh, x there. And I realize uh, that I wrote t and x there. Let's just change that real quick. We'll just go in here, and we'll just write x and x. My bad on that. So because this velocity function is the same thing as a derivative of the first function, or the position function, we can s simply write down, this is p prime, and then we have x in there. So we know that that first derivative is equal to the velocity, which is also equal to that. Now, and I'm going to start writing out here, we know that for the position function, the second derivative in, re in response to x, we know that that's equal to the derivative of the velocity function, 
So V tick mark, and then I don't know why I keep writing T now. So X, and then we know that that's equal to the acceleration function, which we're just going to write as A, and then A X. So we know the change in velocity is acceleration, and that's why we're calling it acceleration there. Now, while we could try to apply that funky fam uh, formula that we discussed earlier to this function to determine what uh, the acceleration would be equal to, it kind of really isn't worth it because we already have a derivative already figured out, which is just the 10x plus 7. So what we just simply do is because the derivative of the velocity is equal to the acceleration, which we're trying to find here, we can just simply take the derivative of this. So we've got 10x, and then that's to the power of 1, so 1 times 10, that's just 10. 1, which is floating up above there somewhere, m minus 1 is just 0. Well, x to the power of 0 is just 1. So we've got 10 plus, and then we've got x to the power of 0. 0 brought down in front, zeroes out the entire formula. And so now we know that our acceleration is just 10. Just plain and simple, 10. And you can kind of see that because, remember, from our function, it is a parabola like that. So while our position function, because we know that x squared, and since that's positive, it is forced to go up like that, we've got that. And then for our velocity, we can see that it's uh, constantly trying to pull up. So, as x continues along. So if this was 0, let's just say, for instance. Well, we know that that's trying to pull up, because it's got the plus 7 there. So in reality, 0 would be somewhere over there, I believe, because um, the velocity would be pointing up there. And so, uh, as it goes, you can see the velocity is increasing and increasing. And... For the acceleration, we know that it's always accelerating at a constant rate of 10. And that's all defining this one curve here. So that's what the second derivative is, and I hope this was useful for you guys to know exactly how to work these out. And if it was, consider giving it a thumbs up, and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. So, uh, in the meantime, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.